Can you tell us some of the lows and challenges you've had to push through? Yeah, I think the biggest low for me, well not the lows, but the biggest challenges that I've ever faced is going to two different new cities and moving there without anything or a name or anything like that and building up from the bottom. That was a real hard challenge, especially coming to London that's such a big, you know, notorious music city. It was, um, that was probably one of the harder ones. And generally that and probably having existential crises at like 20, like what am I doing, am I doing this, is it okay? And is it worth it, you know? Is, it, is what I'm doing and creating worth it? And I think, but I mean that, that affirmation comes when I play shows and when I, you know, perform and when I write music and people, people message me saying that it's changed their life and stuff, which is just uh, amazing and I'm so grateful. Yeah. Can you tell us about the, the time that you spent in Paris, Harry? Um, I, I, I spent, um, a year in France and I lived in Fontainebleau and then eventually I lived in Paris and it was like an indie flick you know so I was living in a one bedroom apartment with six other writers no five other writers and um, we we're just drinking red wine and going to jazz bars and you know getting kicks and just living life and uh, it was just it was it was one of the biggest moments in my life when I felt like I could finally be who I wanted to be and, and you know who I had in my head and I didn't feel the the pressures of everything to not be who I am. And so I just learned how to live, I guess. playing in Piccadilly Circus in the middle of a snowstorm and you know all the tourists were just like this is so magic you know a street performer in London and it's snowing and packing and, and I thought you know they think this is magic and my hands are about to fall off so but I um you know playing in the street has helped me exponentially I mean all my opportunities have come from the exposure that it brings and I think busking you know it's the first time I've ever made music my full-time job and I mean, that's just fucking great. That's just great. Cool. Um, what's the dream you're working towards? What's the dream that, you know, you're, you're going to achieve? Um, that's a hard one, I think. For, every, for any artist, it's more about pushing and, 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 and progressing and building. So going from 50 capacity venues to 200 capacity venues like the Lexington and hopefully 1,000 capacity venues and 5,000 all the way to Wembley and all of that. So I guess for me, I want to sell out shows and I want to make music that people like identify with, you know, like make, I just want to make music that people relate to and find solace in. And I mean, if that, if that's the thing and that's what they do, then you know, that's why I do it. That's the, that's the goal. Okay. And do you ever question your pursuit of music and consider finding something else? No, <laughs> no, I, it's not in my body. I, I can't. There's, there's, there's nothing else. You know, for me, you know, my height, my height, my principal once asked me when I was in grade twelve, like senior year. She said, you know, what's your backup plan? You've got to have a backup plan. Like we really need to find you a backup plan, Harry. I'm getting worried. And I said, no, like there is nothing else. I can't think of doing anything other than this for the rest of my life. We know you're a big lover of lyrics. Can you tell us um, about some of the stories, the limit lyrics, and some of the songs that you're performing? I think, you know, I've, a, a couple of my songs are quite, you know, um, you know, there's this massive issue with uh, toxic masculinity at the moment, and men thinking they can't express their emotions or or their sensitivity and their softer side. And I mean, this is. 
This is just causing a whole lot of problems, a whole lot of problems. And uh, because, you know, the highest rate of death in, among men under the age of 25 is suicide. And um, so for me, for me it's, uh, you know, I like to write about that and love and betrayal and, and all of these things that make us human, I guess. You're also a big lover of guitars. Can you tell us a bit about your guitar? Uh, when did you get it? What do you love about it? And have you ever broken it? Uh, this is, um, you know, Johnny Cash played this guitar. Elvis Presley played this guitar. All of some of my biggest idols played in Martin. And um, I bought this when I was 17 and I saved up gig money for a whole year. And my mum and dad said to me, they were like, okay, Harry, it's your 18th birthday. You either will either buy you a car, and we'll split it. You can spend three and a half, and we'll spend however much, and we'll split it. And then I said, or they said, or oh, your birthday present will be us letting you spend this amount of money on a guitar. And I said the guitar, and I broke it. Um, I cracked it all the way along here, and I had to get it redone. And because it's battered and bruised, but I mean, like, it's like your first car. It is. I mean, like, you're gonna get dents and scratches, no matter how proud of it you are. I mean, you don't. You don't buy a Ferrari to leave it in the garage. Busking the street fighting. Yeah. And then I play, in the live show, I play a Fender Jazzmaster. And I traded this for one of my old guitars because I need, I just wanted a Fender. And, um, you know, for me, the Fender Jazzmaster is good because I voice a lot of open stringed chords, you know, like... I play a lot of open string, open string chords and the pickups and these are Seymour Duncans that the Jazz Masters have. They, they create a lot of clarity so I can put distortion on 
these chords but and it not sound muddy so you still get the clarity but the, the, the boom of the, um, the actual strings and that's you know because I started on acoustic and yeah so that's why I play from the jazz master and I've got two I've got a squire as my backup for an alternative tuning and I've got this one and this one's um, I don't know I can't remember what year it is I think it's a 1992 but yeah so that's me I just want guitars and I love them very much and I don't know if I want to get rid of them good luck tonight Harry Cheers. This time, since your words are mine, we're playing together at the break of day. Harry always had a passion for music. Always, always. Like, he would hold a tune at five in the car. We used to do so many long trips with um, his older brothers for football and Harry would sit there and just, he would just memorize melodies and just words, like, and just sing them back. It was amazing. When the dishwasher needed unloading or there was jobs or chores around the house, Harry would be in his room playing that guitar, just constantly. And we, at all times, any time of the day, he was in there strumming that guitar and we would all yell out, shut up, Harry, come and do your jobs. And I knew I would regret that one day, like. And then he left home and to follow his dream. And I had no more guitar in the bedroom, like. So it was, yeah, turned around to bite me, but. So we missed that the most. Were you ever worried about him going down this less traditional path? Oh, definitely, path? definitely. So many times I tried to say, Harry, go to uni, do a degree in music, have something behind you. If it doesn't work out, you've got something to fall back on. He said, no, Mum, this is my job. I'm going to do it, and I've got to give it my 110%. And if it doesn't work out, I'll worry about that then. So I thought, right, i just got to leave him do it. What has it been like watching your son follow his dreams and even maybe more specifically seeing him tonight? Oh, it, like, he's, um, he must have really good karma because the things he's experienced just in the short, like, say three years, four years that he's been following, the people he's met, it just things fall in Harry's lap, but so, and each is a step forward, so we just, and tonight, to listen to a lot of songs that he's written three, four years ago, and that band, that was just amazing. Just very, very proud of what he's done. So proud. gig in my life and um, and it was just uh, it was astounding to see how many people are really enjoying the music and enjoying themselves thank you so much that was one of the most amazing nights I've ever had in my life and just 2019 is going to be huge so as massive. you continue as you continue to have bigger shows so comparing tonight to the show one month ago there was 15 that. people 20 people there and tonight there was 140 plus people for you as an artist when you're on stage, is it any different for you? Is, it, is there some, is it a different feeling or do you treat it all the same? I like those gigs. Those gigs are really, really fun. Um, I always, 
I just love those gigs very much. Those, those are the type of gigs that I want to do, you know. Um, I just want to keep getting bigger and bigger and playing bigger venues and, and, and pushing myself to the limits of my band. And I just want to keep striving for excellence and striving to make, you know, the ticket money worth it, I guess. And they are different, but each, each gig is, in, is, is unique and beautiful and inspiring to me in, in its own way. And so as long as people are connecting with the music and <clears throat> you know, vibing off the music, then that's that's the main thing, but that was fun. That was fun. What did it mean to have your family here all the way from Australia, your, your whole family? That was um, pretty special. Mom and Dad have been watching me from such a young age to play and and, and push myself and push my, my art, and, and so it was pretty amazing for them to finally see What's been, you know, in the works and what I've been trying to push forward and, and, and make as, as good as possible and so it was, it was amazing to have them there in the back row and in the front row and, and just yelling and, and enjoying themselves and that's all I wanted to, wanted to do there. They're probably just as happy as I am to be here, so that's what I love about it all. But this is a different feeling. You know, I've been to like two gigs with you. I haven't seen you play live before. This is the next level. I don't know if it's because your parents are here or like, you know, you're, I don't know. It feels refined. It feels, yeah. Oh. How, how, what is the difference between? Um, what I can say is like, tonight was special because there were some very, very important people here. And um, yeah, there were some amazingly important people here and, and I just, I love them very, very much, and I feel like right now we're we're, we're sitting somewhere, and, and it's about to tip over, and things are about to come. So 2019, better watch yourself because we're coming for it. You know? <laughs> that's that's the main thing. Sweet. Happy almost birthday, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> Cheers, guys. Thank you so much for coming. Alright, guys. I just like to say um, thank you very, very much for coming, and um, thank you for sharing this sort of fucking evening with me. I can't think of a better day that I've ever had in my life and I can't think of better people to have except for some certain friends at home and they can't actually make it. Um, just thanks for being there for me always and being really good friends. Mum and Dad, you always support me, bro, bro. Thank you so much. And um, boys for coming over. Just all of you, I can't really go into too much detail. Here for supporting me as well. Um, I just like to say thank you very, very much for helping me get to where I, where I am today. And hopefully, we'll all move forward together as friends and we'll all help each other out always and just share the friends and the drinks. And the love. And the, the girls. love, <laughs> yeah. Thanks. Thanks. We love you, Harold. We love you, Harry. Thanks for being funny. This is a pretty good moment for me because I always said that I wanted to sign my first ever record deal before I was 21. 20 minutes. And it is. <laughs> <laughs> Bob it! We're soft on it! Yeah, it's like, yeah. TJ, do you want to sign it first, actually? No, you're good. No, you can sign it. Go, Harry. Go, Harry. Here's the 2019. Yes! Yes! Guys, this is the management, but the actual come. No, backflip on the scooter. You get twisted first. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Make sure there's no training. Thanks very much. Let's get yeah. Yeah. Hey man, we fucking love you so much. Yeah. 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 Share these glasses around. <laughs> <laughs> and this is the cheapest champagne that I can get. Where's the red <laughs> 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 Where's the Tom Curry Johnson, bro?